Is Resident Evil 4 Remake better than Resident Evil 4? You know, that's kind of a tough question because both games are widely accepted to be excellent. However, one is regarded as one of the most influential games of all time, while the other is a remake that aims to capture the same lightning in a bottle that the original did. So did it? Uh, no. Okay, I'm being, it's more complicated than that. Let me explain. Resident Evil 4, the original, is a landmark title in gaming. It paved the way for countless other what am I doing? You know what Resident Evil 4 is. I mean, look at you. You don't need me to explain its influence. You're just here to listen to my potential controversial take that the original RE4 is better than the remake. So let's just skip the intro and get right into it. I think the first and perhaps most important difference to talk about between the two games is the way that they handle their camera controls. RE4 Remake has a very standard, modern, third-person camera that players can freely move around to look in all directions, while the original RE4 keeps the camera fixed on Leon's shoulder. Yeah, you can move it around a little bit, but it's honestly not very helpful, so I wouldn't be surprised if, like me, most other people don't even bother trying to move it. In RE4, you look where Leon is looking, and the rest of the world is obscured in your peripheral vision. As a result, it's kind of hard to get a good look at what's going on around you, meaning that while you definitely have an advantage over your enemies in terms of firepower, they aren't completely outmatched since they have the element of surprise on their side in literally every second of the game. The level design and enemy placement was made with the disadvantage players have in mind, since most encounters will sneakily drop enemies in behind you so that even if you're fighting off a large group of enemies who are all stopped at a single choke point, you'll eventually turn around to find out that a bunch more are running up from behind. This pushes players to improvise and completely breaks down any plans that they might have been making in their heads about how to deal with the encounter. To be blunt, it's awesome and creates a genuine sense of dread since the enemies are pretty unpredictable and catch you by surprise so frequently. I can't count the number of times in my most recent playthrough that I was dealing with some enemies that were directly in front of me only for a few more to come up right behind me as I let out my most genuine and honest fuck. This video is rated PG-13 now for my one use of the word fuck. Ah shit, now we're rated R. Resident Evil 4 Remake frequently does the same thing with its level design, but because you can look wherever, whenever, the enemies don't have that same advantage over you. Part of what makes the original RE4 so effective as a horror game is the fact that you know there's a lot of horrible stuff going on just outside your field of vision, but that if you turn to look at it, the horrible stuff you're currently seeing will then be obscured. Being able to freely look wherever you like in an instant without the consequence of having to commit to looking there robs RE4 Remake of a lot of the tension that's found in the original game. The other part of the overall lack of tension is the way that the remake handles movement. RE4 Remake controls just like any other third-person action game. The original Resident Evil 4 does not. <laughs> it almost has tank controls, the kind that you'd find in earlier games in the series. However, it doesn't have the fixed camera angles that its predecessors had, so it feels a little bizarre to play in modern context, especially when compared to other third-person shooters. At times, it even feels a little bit like a point-and-click adventure game, where you do a puzzle that's solution is just use the shotgun on the angry villager over and over again. The game is more than a little clunky. Turning around requires you to come to a complete stop while you turn at a glacial pace, or remember to just use the quick turn, and it makes navigating the hectic combat arenas that the game throws you in pretty challenging. On top of that, you cannot aim your weapon and walk at the same time, which means you need to fully plant your feet before being able to start holding off the waves of enemies who slowly creep toward you. Now, this is the place where I think a lot of people get hung up when trying to play the original RE4 for the first time in 2024. A lot of RE4 defenders will come to its aid and say, it's an old game, so of course its controls will be bad, but frankly, that's a cowardly way to look at it. Me, an actual RE4 defender, proudly believes that the game's controls are good, actually. The tankiness of the movement means that you have to be deliberate with where you're going since you aren't nimble enough to weave your way through the enemies. On top of that, having to plant your feet in order to shoot means that every time you wanna shoot your weapon, you have to make a critical choice. Do you sacrifice your mobility for the chance to deal damage? That choice 
is the core of the combat loop of RE4 and to me, what makes it so interesting to play. There's nothing else that's really like it since it means that empowering yourself with a weapon actually puts you at a prime disadvantage in most situations. RE4 is about sacrificing power for power, each of which is essential for your survival, but you won't be able to have everything at once. Meanwhile, in RE4 Remake, you're John Wick. And it's fucking awesome. As an action game, I think RE4 Remake is pretty much unmatched. I love the combat in this game. It's so fast and you're just cycling through all of your weapons, churning through legions of baddies like it's nothing. Is that Larry David? It looks like Larry David. As satisfying as RE4 Remake's combat is, however, I just don't think it shares much DNA with the combat in the original game. It strips out all of the unique aspects that we just covered and replaces them with new, modern mechanics. Now, they're not all bad. I really like that you don't have to pause the game every time you want to switch weapons. But in general, I feel like something is lost with the remake. Do you know what I mean? Hey everyone, Editing Peter here. I just found out that there is a control scheme in Resident Evil 4 Remake that's supposed to make the game play like Resident Evil 4, the original. Uh, it's called C1. So here is the recommended button layout for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Here it is for uh, Resident Evil 4 2005. According to the remake, you can see that it is it changes, I think, three buttons, um, which is uh, not much. Let's see if it plays anything like Resident Evil 4, the original. Okay, so already no uh, moving and shooting. Okay, yeah, so uh, literally no change. Now, there are two main reasons why I think the modernized controls were done. The first is that obviously, a lot of people who go back to play the original Resident Evil 4 for the first time encounter a lot of friction with its controls since it doesn't play much like a modern third person shooter. For the remake, they wanted to update the controls so that people can actually play the game. While I think that the original RE4 plays very well, I do understand and respect that choice. My friend Justin has tried the original game a handful of times over the last few years and just cannot get to grips with its controls. He loved playing the remake since it meant that he got to experience the game thanks to its more approachable control scheme. And I think that's great. All right, thanks Justin, bye. The other reason why I think RE4 Remake has more traditional controls is because it's a sequel to the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. Obviously, the original game was a sequel as well, but if you didn't know that and were strictly looking at gameplay footage of RE4 and RE3, you wouldn't assume that they were even from the same franchise. Resident Evil 4 Remake is a very direct continuation of its predecessors, which controlled like modern third-person action games. So it would be pretty wild for Capcom to completely change direction for how RE4 would feel compared to RE2 and 3. As a result, Resident Evil 4 Remake comes with a lot more baggage than the original did. Not only is it a remake of one of gaming's most beloved titles, but it's also a sequel to one of the most beloved survival horror games of the last 10 years. I'm talking about Resident Evil 2, not Resident Evil 3. Sorry, I love you, but I'm just being real. I think it's a much better sequel, however, than it is a remake. Not only do I think that a lot of the spirit of RE4's atmosphere and horror was lost in modernization, but I think that the way the remake handles its story, more specifically its writing, does the original a disservice as well. Resident Evil 4 is extremely scary, especially in its first few hours, but it's also one of the goofiest things I've ever played. Leon has two working brain cells and he makes it everyone else's problem. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? There's a giant golem version of Child Napoleon that chases you in the castle section. This line happens. No thanks, bro. I could go on. The problem that the remake faced when trying to retell that story, however, is that for the most part, the remakes of RE2 and 3 aren't campy, silly games. So as a much more direct continuation of their stories, the game had to drop a lot of that silly tone. That's not to say it's all gone, there's still some level of humor and levity to the game with its cheesy writing, but it definitely takes itself much more seriously than the original did. And listen, this isn't me complaining that things are slightly different. Different is fine. I like all different types of pizza. It's me complaining that RE4 Remake's writing is worse. I think the best example of that problem is with Ashley. 
In the original, Ashley is an annoying child that's terrified at all moments of the game. A lot of people found her to be pretty grating, but honestly, it never really bothered me that much. She, like the rest of the game's cast, wasn't a complicated character. Instead, she was a cardboard cutout of a caricature you'd find in a campy horror movie like The Evil Dead. In the remake, they ground Ashley a lot more in reality. Now, she's an actual scared teen who's dealing with the horrors of everything she's experiencing in a much more honest way. That, I think, is a decent idea for modernizing the character, but the remake doesn't go far enough with Ashley's newfound terror. She has a scene or two that are pretty solid, but all in all, I just don't find her new iteration to be all that memorable because she just doesn't have much personality. There are a few subtle moments where I actually really like her, like when she says this about her phone being broken. Seriously? Just bought this. Or when she says this when she and Leon get inside the castle for the first time. Wow. Look at this place. I mean, it's old, but... Those little moments feel really real to me because she lets a little bit of her personality that's not directly attached to the events of the game shine through, but unfortunately, they're few and far between. Now, I'm not out here saying that the original Ashley was some incredible character that we're all missing out on in the remake, but I'm just giving an example of how the remake updates its characters to be more realistic at the loss of making them memorable. I also don't think that the original game handles Ashley specifically incredibly well. I mean, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. Yeah, thanks, Luis. Really showing your class here. I don't want you to walk away from this thinking that I hate the Resident Evil 4 remake. I do think it's really great, but it feels safe in a way that the original just wasn't. The remake has some solid elements and iterates on some of the ideas present in the original, but it doesn't push the gaming medium forward in any way. The original RE4 will always be influential, but I just don't think developers will be citing RE4 Remake as the basis for the designs of their next games. I really like the remake, but unfortunately, most of the things I love about it are the things I love about RE4, and the things that are left over outside of the combat are things I love about RE2 Remake. There is one thing that I actually really like about the Resident Evil 4 remake specifically, and that's all of the additional little details scattered around the world. Like they tease the El Gigante fight when you go inside Town Hall and there's this like giant skull on the table, and then they do it again in a much less subtle way, but I still think it's cool. There's also this detail where you can see that the villagers cut down trees with their chainsaws, so it's not all forced decapitations. Do you think he wears the bag on his head when he's clocking in for his day job of being a lumberjack? Or like, do the Chainsaw Sisters have to wrap their heads up every morning? Why don't they talk about that in the remake? So, is Resident Evil 4 Remake better than Resident Evil 4? No, at least I don't think so, but I'd handily recommend both to just about anyone. Resident Evil 4 proudly asks, wait, what the fuck am I supposed to do about that? And at the end of the day, the remake asks similar questions. I just prefer the funny voice that the original asks them in. Like and subscribe. Leon Kennedy is like the type of guy who gets a cool jacket and then he makes that into his entire personality. And then when he loses it, he like doesn't know who he is anymore. <laughs> this, this is getting cut. This is, I'm cutting this.